man, it's your boy Bash and P. Uh, I'm here with another Kento Corner um, anime um, review slash recommendation. And today's anime is called Heaven's Memory. centers around a kid named um, Narumi uh, Fujishima and um, he's kind of a kid who never is in town long enough to really make friends so he's pretty much accepted that fact and he goes through the motions of pretending that he's interested in what people around him are saying but he's not at all he's a very introverted kid he really doesn't care what people have to say in that regard and um, he moves to this new town and um, he just happens to stumble upon some very weird and um, eccentric shit going on, man. He sees a girl jump out of a window, and he sees uh, a man running out of a hotel with a bloody fucking ashtray, and he sees a guy with his fucking head split open, pretty much. And um, that was in episode one, but the story centers around his character meeting a group of neats. N-E-E-T, meaning not educated, employed, or in training, right? Uh, pretty much someone who would be on welfare over here, right? But um, he runs into this group of people, right? And um, initially, they had no reaction towards him or whatever. But um, after a while, he gets accepted into their group unwillingly because of one of his classmates, who was named Ayaka. Uh, she introduces him to these people or whatever because uh, she works at a ramen shop where these group of neats frequent. But um, upon meeting these group of people, he is then forced to be introduced to the de facto leader of this crew, a girl named Alice. Uh, Alice looks about 12 or 13, so let's just go with that. Uh, a 13 year old girl named Alice, and she is a very eccentric character. Um, Alice isn't her real name, by the way, but uh, that's what she calls herself. And uh, she's an eccentric young girl, man. She um, is the detective of the uh, group. She solves crimes that she's hired to investigate or problems that she's hired to investigate upon. But she calls herself an advocate of the dead, meaning that she speaks for people who can't speak for themselves. That's far her opinion goes. She has no opinion of shit whatsoever. She tries not to anyway. She has no opinion of it whatsoever but she just speaks for those who can't speak for themselves anymore. And that's basically what this show boils down to. This anime boils down to the character Narumi and how he's slowly evolving into a neat himself. More specifically, how he's evolving into that of a comic. While there are a number of characters, I'm just gonna go through four characters who I feel are central to the story. And those four are Narumi, Alice, Ayaka, and the fourth, or Soichiro Hinamura, which is his real name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to like analyze each of those characters who I just named, give you a bit of background about those characters, explain why I feel they are essential to the story, and then we're going to move on from there. Narumi is obviously essential to the show because he's the main character, but besides that, he is slowly turning into a neat. Something that he, like, 
vehemently denies throughout the course of the show, but as you watch the show, you can tell he's slowly turning into them because he starts to accept certain things that only someone of a neat caliber would accept. One of the examples that I can give is that the character, the fourth, is the leader of this gang, which I get into in a second when I explain his character, and the members of the gang look at Narumi as the big brother type, meaning that once the fourth is kind of like out of the picture or he's sick or he can't make it to lead the game, Narumi steps up and leads the game, and he does it. You know what I mean? Like, that's something that prior to meeting the meets he would not have done. He wouldn't have even put himself in a position to have to do that. You know, but throughout the course of the show, he's turning into a need, and his deductive skills are, like, on Alice's level, but only when he's frustrated or when he's angered or something like that. Because, like, when he's angered, he jumps right to the correct answer, but he doesn't even realize that he did it. So, um, the Rumi's character, man, he's kind of funny because he's the straight man of the group or whatever. He's not the eccentric character. Everyone around him is, but he's a regular guy, and, you know, he's able to adapt to things like most anime characters do, you know. But at the same time, he's still not accepting that this is what life has offered him until the end when he realizes that this is my family. These guys are my family, and I am one of them. His most dominating trait is that he really has a way with words. So more than likely, he will be a con man in the world of the meets. Alice is the main female protagonist next to Ayaka, and Alice is probably the most eccentric out of all the characters in the show. She, like I said before, she's a 13-year-old girl who has taken it upon herself to be an advocate for the dead, meaning she speaks to people who can't speak for themselves. She is a detective who takes on cases that uh, people hire her to do, and she pretty much solves them. And I don't even know if she gets paid or not, because it was never stated that she gets paid, but I did hear a few people say something about compensation. I'm assuming that she's doing this pretty out of the goodness of her heart, because um, she seems like she's that type of character. Uh, you kind of get that vibe from her that she kind of not only enjoys the, 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 the thrill or the like the, the rush in solving a crime, like solving a puzzle, but that she also has a, a big heart and that she wants to genuinely help people because uh, I think it was in episode, it was in episode one or two, she makes it a point to uh, tell Tarumi, I mean to tell Narumi that um, she feels sorry because of the starving people in the world and you know all the crimes that are happening in the world. If only she had looked at her computer faster she would have been able to warn them or she would have been able to do something about them. So she's taking on these responsibilities of the world and she's only like a 13 year old girl. Um, her character, like I said, is very eccentric. Like uh, she only drinks Dokape, which is uh, Dr. Pepper over here. Um, and she eats uh, like leek ramen noodles without the noodles or the meat inside of them. So it's just broth and onions pretty much. That's what she eats. She doesn't eat anything else, and she is a pretty much. Now, I don't know if this terminology refers to her because I I watched another anime, and it referred to that main character, but I don't know if it refers to her, but I can only assume that she's a Hikekomori. You know, like, she only comes out of her house when she, like, has to, because for the most part, she locks herself inside of her room, surrounded by computers. I mean, she is surrounded by computers. So I can only assume that she might be a Hikikimori. I might be wrong, but I'm just assuming that she is one. Um, she is uh, starting to seriously warm up to Narumi's character. Like In the show, he's her assistant. And in the beginning, she was kind of just downplaying that she enjoyed having him around. But later on in the series, you can just tell that she does enjoy his company and she enjoyed having him around. It was like around episode seven or eight when he took a job with the fourth, she genuinely missed having him around, having him do stuff for her. And so she's genuinely accepting him as one of the members of her meat clique and one of the members of her family. And uh, Alice, like I said, very eccentric. If you are into eccentric characters, you will love Alice. Ayaka is the character responsible for introducing Narumi to the meats and bringing him down to uh, Hanemaru, the ramen shop. 
And uh, pretty much she's the one responsible for turning his life upside down because for some reason he could not say no to her. Does he like her? Hmm. Plot development. But um, now, nah, honestly, uh, she's a very bubbly, cheerful type of character. But like most cheerful characters, she's hiding something very, very dark. We'll not go into that. I will not go into that. So that is some spoiler type of shit. But suffice to say, the last few parts of the anime specifically deal with her character and her background. Um, she is probably the most developed character in the show other than the room himself. So her development was really given in those last few episodes um, concerning her family and concerning her background and all that type of shit. You know, concerning why her character is the way that she is. So, like I said, her character in the beginning was only to introduce Narumi to the niece. Because without her character, he would not have fully been introduced to the niece. He met them without her, but he would not have been fully introduced to them. So, like I said, yeah, in the beginning, that was her only role. But later on, she evolved into not only his friend and potential love interest, but a character who has some very, very dark shit concerning her past and all that type of stuff. So, that's why I included Ayaka's character in this character roundup, specifically to build some type of interest so that you all would partake in this wonderful show. The fourth is a character who I feel is responsible for developing Narumi into a man. The fourth is like the leader of this gang called the Hirosaka Group, and he pretty much comes into contact with Narumi because of Alice. And he takes an interest in Narumi, not outwardly, but it's just something that you can just tell as the show goes on. He starts to look at Narumi as a brother. He even initiates uh, Narumi into his game um, per request of Narumi himself. Um, like I say, I think he's responsible for developing Narumi into a man. And also his character serves uh, for the main plot of two somewhat three episodes within, within the show. Um, the fourth is a kind of a stoic type of dude and he also was holding on to some shit that's some major type of shit though, man. Like, and, and also, I put him on here because he is a leader of a gang. He is the leader of a gang and they do all types of shit but it seems like, I don't know how gangs are in Japan but it seems like they doing some relatively respectful shit, you know what I'm saying, for the community, because at one point, they're organizing, like, a, um, a concert for this local girl band, and I'm like, wow, like, they have a reach in the entertainment industry, now, what type of game does shit like that, I don't know, but that's what they did, and, and also, in the later part of the series, some drugs got involved within the show, and they made it a point to get that shit out of their neighborhood. So I'm like, wow, like, this is a game that helps out people and gets drugs out of neighborhoods. Hmm. That's a very interesting take on a game. But the fourth is, like I said, a stoic character, man. He's a, uh, a hardened, you know, streetwise type of character, man. But um, he serves, again, to make the room into a better man, not a better person, but to a better man. The art style is um, fairly decent. Uh, it's done by uh, JC Staff. And um, JC Staff, did, they've done a lot of uh, anime. I mean, from like the early 90s to even like now. Um, what they done? They've done uh, The Familiar of Zero. You've seen that. They've done uh, Toradora. I know a lot of people did watch that. Um, Bakuman. That's one thing that they did. Uh, Dream Eater Mary. Um... Ari of the Scarlet Ammo, um, Witchcraft Works, the, the new thing that I'm watching now, they did that, so um, yeah, they got a lot of um, stuff, and uh, like I said, it's fairly decent though, you know, I don't have any qualms with it, you know, I think it's, uh, I think it's an, an okay art style, uh, it doesn't have the crisp cleanness that, say, um, Attack on Titan had, but you know, it's older than Attack on Titan, so I can't give it too much shit. You know, this anime came out, I think, in 2011, so I can't give it shit, you know. Um, like I said, yeah, the art style, if I had to give it a number from the art style, I'd give it like a, uh, you know, I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10. Both the, 
both the intro and the outro are not to my particular taste, like at all. But um, I do have to note that um, there was an episode, I can't remember what episode it was, god damn it. But there was an episode where I heard rap in the background, and it was in English. So I was like, oh, okay, that was not what I was expecting. I will say this, though. The mood music, awesome. Awesome. It always starts off kind of just like, <laughs> like that. But when shit builds up, you hear it in the background. It's intensified by the shit that's played in the background. You know, like, even to the points where they'll play some shit and then just cut it off. So you just hear silence. I'm like, yeah, that was a that was a good build-up. You, you did your job into building up this scene. So in that aspect, the music is awesome. But the intro and the outro, again, not to my particular liking. That was the outro I played in the beginning of this video. It's not to my particular liking, but some of you might like it. So if I had to give the music anything out of 10, it would be a five. And that's only because the mood music sets up a lot of shit, but the intro and the outro does nothing for me. On the Anime DB website, this um, series was given a 7.5 out of 10. And um, I'm gonna give it a 7.9, almost an eight, not quite there yet. I'm gonna give it a 7.9. And it's honestly for the exact same reason that they gave it a 7.3. But my reasoning for bumping it up is different from there. So I give it a 7.9 out of 10 because the, the, the bad thing about it is the show is only 12 episodes, but the character development for the main character, which is Narumi, and his relationship with Ayaka takes so fucking long to get there that you would have thought the show was going to be at least 26 episodes. Like they painted this picture of them two you know what I'm saying? Like, slowly developing or whatever as the show goes on. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be quite a, you know, not a long anime, but 24, 26 episode one. You can get some shit out of that. But this one's only 12. And that shit, you know, it took a long time for them to get where they were. And I was just like, yeah, it didn't work. The time frame that you, like, you know, put all that shit into, it just fucked it all up, you know. On the positive aspect, one thing that they didn't mention on the anime uh, database website was that um, this show was particularly was done particularly well in both Japanese and English so that's why I gave it a 7.9 I watched it in Japanese first I was like okay I like this voice acting I've never even heard of a lot of these um, particular voice actors I don't think anyway the names just didn't look familiar to me in Japanese so that that, that could have been stupid but it used to look familiar to me. Like some of them I just recognize, like June Fukuyama, I think is his name. Um, Romy Park. Some of them just look familiar to me, but these didn't. So um, I watched it in Japanese. I thought to myself, this is cool. I like the way these, voice, these voices sound. Then I saw that it was done in English, and I was like, okay, who did it? I always do that. I always do that. I always say, who did it? Because if Funimation usually does shit, I usually have more reservations towards it. I'm like, ah. I don't know, man. Funimation. For the most part, throughout my anime watching, you know, career, <laughs> Funimation has done the dub, and I've always appreciated it as a kid because I didn't have to read. But now that I'm old, I'm just kind of, yeah, sometimes it's just like, I don't know, it just seems like you didn't put any effort into, like, picking these people. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm appreciating Funimation more now because they're hiring a lot of uh, no-name people to do some, some voices. But since how Filmworks did this one, and I was just kind of like, okay, they recycle people a lot, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of their voice actors and voice actresses there can change the fuck out of their voices. You know what I'm saying? Certain ones can't, but for the most part, they can change the fuck out of their voices. So I was like, it should be good. And it was. It was good in both English and in fucking Japanese. So I was like, yes, like, that's awesome. It's, it's always good in Japanese anyway, but this one was done well in English. I was just like, yeah, that's, that's awesome, man. That's awesome, because I feel like Brittany Karbowski was a good choice for Ayaka because of where her personality was. I'm just like, yeah, like, all that shit worked. All that shit worked. I especially, especially like the way they did the fourth voice. I, I, I like that shit, because he kind of, you can tell that his character is, like, from, like, the, uh, the Osaka area, I think. And, you, you like, his accent sounds different from everyone else's. Even his friend Renji, who wasn't from the Osaka area, but hung around the fourth enough, his accent sounded different. And they did that with his English voice actors. Like his English voice actor 
sounded like slightly different from most of the other people who were speaking English. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, that sounds pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, they did a good fucking job. And that's why I gave this anime a 7 out of 9. I mean, a 7.9 out of 10. So I highly recommend this anime. Uh, I've never really even talked to anybody about this anime. I've never even heard of anyone who watched it. But I liked it. You know, I like this anime. I'm not going, I'm not sending for saying they go spend, you know what I'm saying, 60 or so dollars on it, you know what I'm saying? But I would, you know, I watched it online. Hell, I would order it. I fucking liked it. I, I like this anime. I would love to see some behind the scenes footage and hear some fucking uh, commentary on it, man. But I thought this was a very good series. Um, I heard the light novel series is a lot better because in the light novel series, apparently, um, can't, can't, never mind. Can't talk about it. It's spoiler. But I heard the light series, the light novel series, oh, that was such a dick tease. I heard the light novel series is a lot better. So I highly recommend this anime. Please watch it. I am Barry St. P. signing out. And I apologize for the length of this video, but this is one series that I really do like. Even though I gave it a 7.9 out of 10, I really do like it. I want other people to watch it. I tried to get my mom to watch it like two years ago. That shit didn't happen. Uh, so, yeah sad for me but real shit though please watch this series man uh just give it a good look master sam p man signing out